service tonight. We're glad to see you that made the way out. Those who are streaming with us, we're so glad to see you. And our theme for uh, this uh, week is Give Jesus Our Highest Praise. This is uh, Resurrection Weekend that we celebrate that Jesus died, uh, was put in a tomb, and he rose again. Amen. And I've heard people say it for a few years, and I've adopted that slogan at Easter is the rest of the Christmas story. Amen. Amen. Started, Amen. What started at Bethlehem ended at Calvary. Amen. 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 And they took care of us for all eternity. Amen. I thank you so much for doing it. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, uh, if you're streaming with us tonight, text in. If you got a prayer request, if you um, something we can do to help you, be sure to text in and let us know. We'll be glad to do that for you. Um, Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. We want you to be with us if you can. We have sunrise service at 7 o'clock in the morning. And uh, uh, Sister Chambers is going to take care of it for me. So be here if you can. If we have anybody to stream, we can stream it. But I'm not sure if we get that worked out. But we will definitely uh, be here, Lord willing, at 7 o'clock Sunday morning. You get in his body as it used to be. Because we used to do it at 6. And we come back at 9.45, so you're doing it at 7, but you're not coming back to 11. So we okay, and we appreciate it. Amen. We just pray that God will bless us like he's never had us before on Easter Sunday. We should be a part of it. We go to the Lord in prayer. A, a, a lot we're going to mention, and some I'll forget about. Maybe you can help me that I haven't forgot about. Uh, pray God's protection. Maybe we pray for all the prayer line requests. There's been a lot of them. For Charles Morris Clark, Debbie Brooks, and her family. And I uh, don't know if you've seen it, but Debbie's son died unexpectedly over the weekend. I think he might have just been a little over 50. And I don't know his last time I heard, they don't know what he died from, but he had sleep apnea. And they tell me all the time that, you know, you can go to sleep one night, and next morning you didn't get up, that you could die during the night. But uh, uh, she loved him, and I don't think they got to spend a lot of time together. And, you know, families go different ways. But you pray for him and, and pray for uh, for his family. And I believe he's going to have receiving the friends. And I think the we saw it on the Friday, Friday seven day or seven nine something like that. It's just Butler, so if you want to go and support her, that'd be good. I don't know him, but we're praying for all of them tonight, amen. So don't forget uh, to pray for that request, Brother uh, Francis, and Sister Francis, and Donnie Staples, pray for them. Pray for Peggy Bridges' family, Brother Ralph, and wife Shirley, I think they've both been sick. I talked to Ralph to come by the house today, and we're praying for him, and uh, keep praying for them. Pray for Roy and Kat, they're both here tonight. I'm glad to have them with us. we we'll pray for them the way Cut his hand with the fall the other day, and we're praying that he'll just continue to heal up. Sister Wilson, uh, Sister Cat, <coughs> Sister Jessica, different things, that, and we're praying for her. Uh, pray for Harvey's brother, Kate K. Leeson, Helen Parker. Then you pray for Colleen Woody, Annie Hambright. I think she's a little sick tonight, so we're praying for her, her sister, and also her sister's son. Pray for Robert Oakley, who's been in the hospital. I think he's home. He still solicits our prayers tonight. Uh, pray for Susan Neer and Barbara Robinson. Both of their families are sick. We pray for them today. Pray for them. Pray for Louise Grant. She still has good days and bad days. And days she don't remember too much. But pray for her. Pray for all my sisters. Pray for Geraldine. She's still in the hospital. We're going on second week here. And we're just believing God to touch her infection she got when they tried to do a skin wrap on her foot. So pray for her. Uh, pray for Todd and Wendell. You know what's going on there. They're moving away from us, but uh, uh, they still won't be close, I believe. And uh, we're going to thank God for the time we have with, with them in the past and the time we have in the future. Amen. Uh, pray for Vernon West, your mom, Debbie West, daughter, Leanne. Also pray for Vernon and Debbie. I don't see Debbie tonight. Sometimes she has to work like a music. Pray for her. Pray for Kay and Debbie's sister, Sue. Pray for Wayne and Kay Coe. We know God can deliver all these people. Pray for all the Bree families. Remember the only one crisis in Ukraine and around the world. And we'll believe God to touch them all. We're going to let Tommy come up with the service, taking prayer with us on the floor. And the list I had with extra names right on. I missed some of them. So if you remember some of those prayers, and Charlie's been sick. 
We're praying for her. She's been sick the last couple of weeks. And there's others. We're just praying for all of them. We'll let Tommy come and take your request. Worship with us tonight. Let me just say, don't go nowhere. We've got Brother Chuck Poole here. He and Joyce. And God's giving him a miracle. And he's going to be preaching for us a little bit. So just worship Amen. with them as long as you can. Amen. You know, we're on this side here with a question tonight. What about the sinner's sake? Sister Mark. Now just keep remembering John's job. Anybody else in the sinner's sake? Anybody over here? A friend of mine um, just got a notification this afternoon that her brother in law has got a brain aneurysm that's inoperable. I don't know his name, but it's. Um, it is Chris Wooden's brother-in-law. Anyone else on this side? Anyone else on this side? We just stand to the Lord, but I stand to the people to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Lord. We pray for you, sir.
tithes and offer everything not to bark their brother Chuck tonight. Father, we just humble ourselves again, Lord, as we come into your presence tonight. Lord God, we're singing, Lord. We come here to worship you tonight, Lord. We come seeking you, Lord. We hope our worship will be pleasing to you, Lord. We ask your blessings on this offering, Lord, as we bring it to the altar now, Lord God. We'll be sure to thank you for what you do for us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
sure you said, Lord, I never thought I'd have to go through this. I'm not, you know, but you're here. God got you through it. And, you know, I work with public, so I talk to a lot of people. I have over the over 16 years that I've been there. And I've heard a lot of people's stories and things, you know, and they've told me the same thing. You know, I never thought I'd have to go through this. But, you know, the key word there is through, because if you got God in your life, you'll go through it. You know, right. as hard as it is, as much as it hurts. You know, God's always there. And the burdens that we carry, you know, he always helps us with those burdens. But yes, no matter what's going on in your life, he's still God. That's right. Amen. Amen.
which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Yes, amen. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, or in those uh, whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. amen. Father, Amen. thank you tonight. We appreciate the reading of the word tonight. Appreciate the privilege tonight, Lord, of being in your house for those that have gathered here for this midweek service tonight. For those that are live streaming tonight, we just ask that you just touch them. Lord, let their lives be touched and changed by the power of God. We give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated tonight in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
want to preach tonight just for a minute, if we could, on this thought, look at all the Lord has done. Amen. You know, we live in a time where you don't have to look very far. You're going to find grumbling and complaining and murmuring. But I just want to know tonight, I uh, just want you to know tonight all that God has done. Amen. 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 All that he's doing. You know, uh, the sad part about Joshua 24 here, about verse 15, is usually about all that we ever know, all that we ever can remember. Uh, but as we look at this, we find that it's coming down to the end of Joshua's life. Joshua is 110 years old, and he's about to die. There were some last-minute instructions that he was wanting to give to the people of God. And to do that, he began to tell them what God was saying to him at that moment. Now, we all know Joshua. We know that he uh, he was one of the two, Joshua and Caleb, who came back, one of the, the two of the spies that came back with a positive report. They said, we're well able to overtake the land. You know, the other ten said, you know what, there's giants in that land. We look like grasshoppers in their side. And Joshua has grew, grew up with these people. He knew what they, uh, what their, what, he knew what was in their hearts. He knew what they were made of. He knew at the first sign of trouble, they were ready to give up. They were ready to turn back. They were ready to, you know, he, he was there when they turned against Moses and they turned against Aaron. He yeah. was there when the people said, you know what, it'd be better for us if we just died in Egypt. Amen. You know, why has God brought us out here so that we can die and, you know, have a grave in this wilderness? So Joshua has grown up with these people. He knew these people. He knew what was in their hearts. He knew what they were all about. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he's fixing to pass on. He's fixing to die. 110 years old. He served God. I mean, he was the uh, successor, if you would, after Moses. He's the one that brought him across the Jordan. He's the one that brought him into the promised land, uh, began to divide the inheritance uh, that God had given them. And so Joshua comes down to the end of their days, and as Joshua begins to talk to them, he closes his life out by telling them all that God had done for him. Amen. Amen. I mean, what a way to be, you know, uh, to come down to the end of your days and just, you know, all you can say is, look what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. I, I marked in my Bible of the times here. The Bible says in verse number one, just going to go back and we'll look at these verses and I see how far we can go. The Bible says in verse number one of Joshua 24, and Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to sheep them. He called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I, now this is where I began to mark. Verse number 3, Joshua starts out. The Lord's talking to Joshua or told Joshua what to say, Joshua begins to speak for the Lord, and this is what he says in verse number 3, and I marked them in my Bible. In verse 3 he said, And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, yeah. multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. It started out here, God said, I took your father Abraham. The first thing that I find in these verses is that God chose Israel. Amen. I mean, God chose the people of Israel. They were his people. They were the apple of his eye. And, and Joshua comes to remind the people uh, that there was really nothing special about them concerning all the people of the land. It was that God just looked upon them and God chose them. He called out Abraham and he told Abraham and he brought Abraham from the other side of the flood. And then verse number four again, he says, and I gave. Unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, and I gave unto Esau uh, Mount Sir to possess him, but Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And it just goes on and on all the way down to the verses that are read almost to where it says that God said, and I sent Moses, he said, I plagued Egypt, I, I, I did uh, uh, to that which I did among them. Afterwards, he said, I brought you out. I brought your fathers out of Egypt. He said, I uh, uh, 
And, the, and your eyes have seen what I did in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he said, I brought you out of the land of the Amorites, and I gave them unto your hand that you might possess their land, and I destroyed them before you. Uh, and so we just go on and we begin to see all that God has done. Now, Amen. just remind, just want to remind you here now uh, that uh, uh, Joshua is about to die, but he's reminding the people. See, Joshua's already made up in his mind what he and his family is going to do. He knew the tendency of these people were to serve other gods, to have idols, you know, not to be wholeheartedly uh, serving the Lord. He knew their tendency, but Joshua said there, uh, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know what you're going to do, but for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And he tells them, choose you this day. And so all through these verses, we see the personal pronoun, I. That represents God. God says, look what I have done for you. I mean, all of us in this house tonight, we can just take a moment of inventory tonight and we can just look and begin to remember all that the Lord has done for us. Sure, we may be in difficult times. Sure, we may be in the middle of a difficult season. But let's just take time tonight and think about all that the Lord has already Amen. done for us. Amen. First of all, He saved our soul. He yes. sanctified us, brought us out of that world, filled us with the Holy Ghost. He put a call in our lives, and He's helped us all along life's journey. And God chose them, and just as God chose Israel, He's chosen you and I tonight. Amen. We're chosen of God tonight. Yes. Amen. So verses 1 through 13, basically, what we have here is an overview of the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. I can tell you, I don't know how long you've been saved, ever how long it's been, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, or 50 years. It would be hard tonight to, to take pen and paper and just begin to try to recall all that the Lord has done. That's right. Because He's done so much That's for right. us, Amen. we just can't tell it all. That's right. Amen. It would be hard tonight to begin to try to, I mean, we may be able to bring the, some of the major points in our life, uh, some of the major times in our life that God just showed us up in a mighty way when we thought when we were down to nothing but we realized that God was up to something yes. and he helped us through the difficult times yes. in our life. Sure that there's been times upon times that the Lord has helped us up and that we wasn't even aware of. That's How right. you forgot your keys one day and happened <coughs> or maybe forgot something at home and maybe had to turn around and go back to only realize when you got down the road there was a big accident there and you thought through your mind that well if I'd have left when I was yeah. supposed to. That could have been me in the middle right. of that accident. That's right. We know the times that God has helped us. Uh, but what about those unseen times Amen. that God was on the scene Amen. Uh, and we somehow wasn't even aware of it? Amen. 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 Joshua was wanting the people to remember the uh, goodness of God and what God has done for them through the years. Uh, he speaks in a lead and he knows what the tendency of their life is. Once he leaves, he knows that they're apt to go back to the way they used to be. Amen. So Joshua's calling them to make a covenant with God today. God's co Joshua's calling them together to renew a covenant with God. Amen. Amen. Let's look at a few more verses here. The Bible says in verse uh, number 9, Then Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel, and sinned and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I hearken not unto Balaam, and therefore bless you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. Amen. Yeah. Think about that. The enemy had set out a plan to destroy you. Amen. But God said it's not about to happen. Amen. 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 God, in, God in some miraculous way delivered you and I out of the hand of the enemy when he sought to destroy us. Amen. When he thought, surely I've got them into a place right now to where I can destroy them. They'll not praise the Lord anymore. I mean, after all they've been through, but if we kind of like Job, we just keep bouncing.
counseling back and say, you know what, naked I came into this world, naked I'll leave. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Sometimes hard times uh, come to the lives of people, but through it all, we just got to learn to just bounce back and say, blessed be the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. And, and that He's helped us through it all. Amen. And we look at these verses, we find there that He called Israel, and God had delivered Israel. God had delivered them over and over multiple times in their uh, journey and in the wilderness and now as they're into Canaan land we find that God has delivered them from their enemies. Uh, God had guided them. We know the story there how that during the traveling of the wilderness how that God was a, a light a, a, a cloud of, a, a light by day and a cloud by night and how that God would just uh, uh, guide them through that wilderness uh, and, to, and to help them to lead them and to show them the way. I'm thankful that the Lord is still showing us the way. I mean, we're amongst, I mean, we just got to be real and honest tonight. We're living in a time of great confusion, and if we're not careful, if you listen to this one and listen to this one, you won't know which way to go, but if we'll listen to the Holy Ghost, Come on. if we'll listen to the Come on. Lord, Amen. if we'll listen to His Word, He'll guide us uh, in the right direction. Yeah. I don't want to get... We're too late in life uh, to get off track now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're too close home tonight yes. to, to even think about turning Amen. around. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says here uh, that in verse number 11, he said, God said that he blessed you still, so I delivered you out uh, of his hands. And Joshua continues on and on and on uh, concerning what God has done uh, for his people. And God's not through with His people yet. Man. God's still doing for His people. If we'll just trust Him and obey. we just got to take responsibility. Josh was telling the people here, you've got to take responsibility for your own choices tonight. Amen, that's right. I mean, it's, it's easy to blame somebody else. Yes, it Josh was saying, you know what, we come to the place in this journey, we've got to take responsibility for our own choices. Yes. If you choose wrong, then the possibility there is you're going to have to suffer the consequences of it. Amen. And that's what God was telling them. Somewhere down the road, you're going to have to suffer the consequences of your choice. Uh, you, we have a desire, you know, we have to have that desire tonight uh, to do what's right. Amen. Joshua, 110 years old, he's going home to be with the Lord. And, uh, I mean, his journey is over. And he knows there's a lot of them that are following in his path. Uh, and he's just telling him, you've got to come to that place in your own life uh, where you have to have a desire to do what's right for yourself. Amen. And do what's right for yourself. That's right. Verse number 11. He says, and you went over Jordan and came into Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you. And the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gergeshites, the Hivites, the Zebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. That's right. That's right. You, know what, you know what that tells me? It seems like the children of Israel had enemies coming from every different angle. That's right. From every different corner. From every different side. The enemy was coming against them. And it looked like from the natural uh, that there was no way. But the Bible says here... God made the statement. He told Joshua, he said, you tell the people, I delivered them into your hand. Amen. Amen. God gave them the victory. Everywhere, it was, as long as they followed the Lord, God would give them the victory. Somewhere along the way, through it all, God would give them the victory. And it's the same for me and you tonight. God will give us the victory. If we'll just keep following Him and holding to His nail scarred hand, God promised that He'd give them the land, and God gave them the land. Amen. Amen. Now, look at what He said in verse 12. He said, And I sent the hornet before you. And drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword nor with thy bow. God said, I did it. That's right. God said, I did it. I sent a hornet before them to drive you out from before you. I mean, God goes before us. 
I mean, he goes before us. He's watching after us tonight. I mean, he's keeping us. Uh, you know, the old song said, if you know the Lord's uh, keeping you, what you got to worry about tonight? If you know his hand's upon you tonight, what you got to worry about? He'll keep you tonight. The one who never slumbers and never sleeps, uh, who's always on the throne, uh, and all we got to do is call on him, and he, he'll be Amen. there, and he'll answer our prayer. And God's saying, I gave you their land. What are you talking about? He gave them land uh, where they lived in houses. They didn't have to build. They ate of the vineyard. They didn't plant. I mean, they ate of the fruit of the vine that they didn't have to plant, that they hadn't planted, that it was all there. God made a way for them. He brought them into a land, and He gave that to you. Now, verse 13 is the last verse here before we picked up on these last two. He said, And I gave and I have given you a land for which you did not labor, oh, right. cities for which you built not, and you dwell in them, and of the vineyards and the olive yards you planted not, uh, you planted not, do ye eat. Now listen to this. I mean, he said, I've given you all of this. To this point, it looks like there's been very little labor on the behalf of the people. All they had to do was believe God. You know, we, we a lot of times we try to we try to do it ourselves uh, and we get frustrated because it ain't working, but if we'll just do it the way God told us to do it, and if we'll just trust Him and allow Him to do it the way uh, that it was intended for us to do. Now these next two verses, the verses that I read to you, I want to take time just for a moment tonight to look at these. And again, Joshua's calling upon them to put their faith in practice. Not just talk about it, Amen. but do it. Amen. It's calling for them to put their faith in practice. Right. Don't talk about it. Just do it. I, I think Joshua was saying, you know what? I, through these years, I've experienced enough lip service to serve me a lifetime. Wow. That's right. Let's not just talk about it. Let's just do it. Faith without works is dead. We know that. But he said in verse number 14, Now therefore, fear the Lord. Very little that we see today, I believe, in the fear of the Lord. Very little we see, especially within uh, this nation in which we live today, very little that we see of the fear of the Lord. But Joshua said, fear the Lord. That word there just basically reverence. He's holy tonight. That's right. Amen. Fear the Lord. Yes. Fear Him. Yes. Fear the Lord tonight to reverence the Lord. Yes. He said, uh, and serve Him in sincerity. Yes. Amen. Be honest. Be complete. Right. Be entire. Be, 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 be all that He would have you to be. To be uh, complete in Him. Without spot, without blemish, he would say, to be upright, to be clean, to have clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. Joshua was just telling the people here, he said, fear the Lord, reverence Him, be real with God. Yes, amen. Be real with the Lord, be sincere with Him, and in truth. Truth means to be that to be trustworthy. Amen. amen. To be trustworthy. Can the Lord trust us? I preached a message several years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago, concerning that of uh, when, when they came, when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, he, he uh, asked the angels, I believe it was, he said, uh, can, uh, can, we, can we trust Abraham and what we're about to do here? Amen. Can God trust us with his word tonight? Can he trust us with what he's about to do? Now the word there, uh, truth means uh, to be trustworthy and to be faithful. I mean, Joshua is about to die. He's re, uh, re just rehearsing the people all that the Lord has already done for them. I mean, God's already given them more than enough reason to serve him until they die. Amen. God's already given you and I enough reasons 
to serve him till we die. Now, I've heard people say, you know, if he didn't do anything else for me, but I need the Lord to do something else for me. Yes. I need him to help me get up in the yes. morning. Yes. I need him to help me to walk right and talk yes. right. Yes. I need him to bless me. But it, had, he, had he not done enough for us already, he's already done enough uh, for us to serve him the rest of our days uh, in truth and in sincerity and yes. honesty yes. and to be faithful and to be trustworthy unto the Lord. Because the Lord sure has been good to us. Had he? I said he sure has been good to us. God gave them the land and Joshua comes to this place in his life. He said there's a decision now that has to be made. There's a decision that has to be made. That's right. I believe there's still a lot of folks that's been you know uh, being tossed to and fro. That's right. Don't know which side they want to be on. Joshua said, there's a decision here that's going to have to be made. Amen. He said, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, then to choose you this day whom you'll serve. Right. Joshua said, now it's time to make a choice. Amen. That's right. If it seem evil to you to serve the Lord after all that he's done for you. That's right. Listen. I mean, listen to the words of Joshua. As he's talking to these people... If after all that the Lord has done for you, if it seems evil for you to serve Him, then, to serve, then choose which God you're going to serve then. I mean, just choose the God that you're going to serve. Is it going to be a God of this world? Is it going to be God of money or, or position or power or fame or whatever it is? If it be, if it be evil, if it seem evil unto you to choose the Lord, choose you this day whom you'll serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but it's for me and my house, will serve the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's right. For me and my house, we don't serve the decision's Lord. already been made. Amen. Now, we know if you read the rest of this chapter, yeah, the decision that the people made. But you don't have to go very far into the scripture to find out they weren't true to their word to God. Amen. The Bible says here that, and, and verse number 14 through verse number 24 here is really just a rehearsal that God, that Joshua's put in before them of their responsibility. As right. believers tonight, we have responsibilities That's right. to Thank God. You. We have responsibilities to each other. We have responsibilities to the church. As people of God, we have responsibilities. And God, uh, Joshua's letting the people know, uh, uh, or rehearsing before them, their responsibility. Let's look at verse 16. He said, And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For, for the Lord our God, He it is that brought us up, and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which uh, did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us all the way wherein we went, and among all the people uh, through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelled in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for He is God. Amen. They stood there before the Lord. They made a covenant with uh, Joshua. They renewed a covenant that they had already made with God. That, that they're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Sometimes it do us good just to come down and refresh and renew the covenant that we made uh, with the Lord. Because uh, the enemy sometimes saying, you know, you can't make it. Uh, the enemy saying it's too hard. Uh, the way's too difficult. And sometimes we just have to come to a place that we stop and remind ourselves uh, of the covenant that we've made with God. That we're going Going through, that Amen. we're going through. Though the waters, uh, though the waters may be over us, and though the fire may be about us, uh, they can't harm us because we're going through with the Lord. He said here in verse number nineteen, and Joshua said unto the people, "Ye cannot serve the Lord, for He is a holy God. He's a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods." then he will turn and do you hurt uh, and consume you after that he had done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. You got a decision to make. 
They got into, Joshua said to the people, you can't serve the Lord. He's holy. And somehow or another, Joshua knew that these people, uh, they proved themselves to be unholy from time to time. They, uh, they proved themselves to be unfaithful from time to time. They proved themselves to not be trustworthy from time to time. And Joshua said, you can't serve him because you don't have the mindset, that you don't have the heart's desire to serve him. But they said, nay, but we will serve him. And so here twice in these few scriptures, the Bible tells us that they renewed that covenant. Verse 22, and Joshua said unto the people, you are witnesses against yourself that ye have, chose, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, we're witnesses. Joshua, Joshua here is calling the people to a place of separation and devotion. Or was it Paul said, come out from among the world, be saved, yes. saved the Lord, touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. That's right. God's holy. Amen. There on that mountain, Mount Sinai, people couldn't even come and touch the base of the mountain. The animals couldn't come and touch the base of the mountain because God's holy. God's holy. And God, uh, Joshua here is calling the people to a place of separation and devotion. He said in verse number 23, Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are mine. Joshua, look at this. Here's a people that Joshua is witnessing to of all the, that God has done for them, all that God had, how that God had made a way for them. And Joshua knew that there were still strange gods in their midst. Right. That they still had idols in their midst that, and that they hadn't come clean with God. Okay. You know, a lot of people have a lot of trouble staying true to God when they're trying to hold on to the things of the world. Come on. Amen. We've seen it too many times yeah. where they would come and they would pray and you just knew they got a hold of God but once they got out those doors there was a decision that had to be made they had to continue on with God. They had to let go of those things that they were trusting in before they came to that altar. And that it seemed it was sort of like the children of Israel. They came out of Egypt but it was hard to get Egypt out of them. That's why we need to get saved. We need to get sanctified. We need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to be renewed in the Holy Ghost. And we need to serve God. And we can't serve Him if we're holding on to the things of this world. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Weights and the sins that does so easily beset us. Amen. I said, how did Joshua know? Joshua knew the people. Joshua said, and Joshua said in verse 24, and the people said to jo Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day right, yeah. and set them a statue and an ordinance in sheep. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it had heard, listen, for it had heard the word, it had heard all the words of the Lord which he had spake to us. It shall therefore be a witness unto you, lest you deny your God. Amen. Joshua said, We're going to set this stone up. This stone's heard mm. what you said, what you promised. And Joshua knew there's going to come a day that they would probably say, we really didn't say that. <laughs> Joshua says, it's already written and it's already recorded the statement that you made that we're going to serve God. Amen. When it came to a place of where they were trusting in their idols again, where they were worshiping idols, where they were worshiping false gods, Joshua, there was going to be a, it was going to be recorded. Though Joshua was going to die, it was going to be recorded in the book there, the book of the law. And the Bible says that it was there, that there was going to be a witness unto them uh, that they had made this promise to God. That's right. Amen. Joshua said, at least you deny your God. We didn't really say that. Joshua said, I know you're going to come to a place to where you're going to say that. And we'll close here. And so Joshua let the people depart, every man into his inheritance. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, 
being 110 years old. Amen. Joshua knew what was in the hearts of the people. We gotta know. We 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 gotta know what the right thing is. Amen. I'm thankful that I know you you hear the truth here. We have gotta know what the right thing is. Yes. We know what the right thing is. We know the right way. And Joshua wanted the people to know. They, they had to know what the right thing is. And Joshua said, once you find that right way, walk in that way. Don't go back. The word said, a man put his hand to the plow and looks back, not fit for the kingdom of God. Have you ever? I mean, I, I, I've used the analogy many times, but have you ever? Uh, I've thought about a man out in his field plowing. Got some farmers here. Got some men out there, got them out in the field plowing with their with their tiller or their plow or whatever it is. And they're laying off that road and they look back. And how crooked that road can get? Just by looking back. Hey man, got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And basically, that's what Joshua was telling the people of the Lord. Joshua knew he was about to die. Joshua said, I'm fixing to leave here. But you need to keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. 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 That's right. I believe we, we've all experienced death. I mean, we've got loved ones that have gone on before us. And I believe if, they, if there's anything that they could call back from heaven to us tonight, I believe it would be this. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of distractions in the world today. Oh, yes. Let's yes. keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen. So come back to the music Amen. If you would tonight. I pray that something's been said tonight, maybe it's touched your heart. Uh, but I'm, I'm just coming to tell you that we just we have to just renew our, ourselves, renew Amen. our covenant with the Lord, and hope uh, that God's called us to walk in the right way. Right. And we've got to walk in the right way. Amen. Amen. Once we know what's right to do it, we need to do what's right. Amen. As Joshua said there, you know, as for me and my house, I don't know what you're going to do. I mean, you know, they said they estimated two, three million people. Joshua was called all the leaders, all those in high positions and places there. He said, I don't know what y'all are going to do. Yeah. Decision yours. Amen. But I can tell you, for me and my house, we can serve the Lord. Amen. Would you stand with him tonight all over this house? We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Don't know how many more days we got left, but we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Don't know how many more trials or how many more difficult places, but we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't know how many more impossibilities we're going to have to face, but we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Because He is the way. Amen. He's the truth.
guess if this is the way you feel, you'll be running after Easter. Still doing what you're doing, but you chose the Lord. I love this old song. I don't know the verses, but I guess I've sung this old course uh, more times when I was discouraged than any other time. To tell the devil that I don't run a mile and come for the Lord. Hallelujah. See the years go by, many days go by. If you don't get, ever get sorry that you served the Lord, one day you'll be awful glad you did. Amen. Amen. When you hear him say, well done, I couldn't take your shame. Amen. I talked to Brother Chuck today. I talked to several others today. Ben and I talked about it today. I don't know what, other than the devil, I don't know what's got in the mind of people. Amen. I mean, they are absolutely like they're going crazy, you know? And I thought that a few years ago, but they were sane then. Amen. They were good shape then. They've gone crazy now. Amen. Anybody thinks you can't make it with the Lord? He says, off the plane. The Bible says a fool that's sitting in his heart. There's no God. Amen. So, you know, I'm not calling you a fool, but I think it's a very foolish thing. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. Yes. And know that he can do what you want to with him. Praise the Lord. With you. Amen. Let's just sing this little for us. Ready up to get started. Amen. Be great of mine. You believe that say, I travel for the Lord. And I don't regret one time that I have trusted in God's story.
It, it's okay if you don't know where the eggs are yet. Amen. But you know where the house is at on Sunday morning. And at 7 o'clock, Sister Chambers, I can't wait to hear from the speaking board. I asked her, and she told me no, but I think the Lord told me yes. And she come back and said, I'll do it. Amen. So that'll be all right. And we're looking forward to that. The 11 o'clock hour, when God comes down and meets us, just like you will at the 7 o'clock hour. Amen. Sunday night. Worship the Lord. Amen. This week, love him. I hope you have a good second half of the week. Amen. Be back ready to worship the Lord. Anything to be saying in all hearts for here tonight? All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Don, just go ahead and admit this message. Joyce, it's been good to have you. Joyce come through a, a lot. She had a miracle one Sunday morning when Lou like she ever go to church again. Yeah. She, 10 minutes or so before Chuck left, she said, Get me ready. I'm going. Amen. She's been going ever since because somebody touched God for her. Amen. 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 Father, we humble ourselves, Lord, as we bring the service to a close. Lord God, we thank you once again, Lord God, for meeting with us here tonight, Lord God. We know lots of times the doors are closed on Wednesday night in some churches, Lord, but we thank you, Lord God, that we can come here, Lord, and meet with you, Lord, on a Wednesday night. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for uh, Brother Poole, Lord God, and Joyce being with us tonight, Lord God. We just ask you to continue to lead and guide them. Father, we thank you for Joyce's healing, Lord God. Right now, we know it's a miracle, Lord God. As we've got these doors, Lord God, we just ask you to keep your hand on us, Lord, and we'll continue to praise you and give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.